Shalom, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakodash. We're going to say double honors to our apostles and elders here at Great Millstone. Just another class session. In this case, it's going to be highlighting a particular Amalek. I've seen some videos about them recently, and it's, it's something to pretty much laugh at. If you know anything about the Amalekites, they, are, uh, they deny the New Testament and they deny the Messiah altogether, right? Especially the New Testament, right? But nevertheless, you see, I see these videos of them actually um, putting in like uh, uh, setting up orders and, and uh, getting red heifers ready to sacrifice in what they would, what they're building, their third temple, which they're building in Jerusalem. And then they also so-called reveal what the Lion of Judah is, which is funny because, again, you can only really find that in the New Testament, but yet they claim that they don't believe it. But yet you can see them trying to act and to build the third temple, which according to the scriptures is spiritual. We're going to briefly cover that. And they're trying to reveal what they call the Lion of Judah, but they don't understand that the Lion of Judah is Yahweh Shai. But nevertheless, this is what they're doing. You know, they're pretending to play a role of which they, they do not fit, and they don't even understand it in the first place, you know, because... Esau is a carnal man, and Jacob is a spiritual man, and so is the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So when they're thinking about Third Temple, they're literally thinking about building and building a Third Temple because they believe that they are these people, which they're not, because the true biblical Jews are so-called Negroes. So we're just going to watch it, you know, laugh, and just show, according to the scriptures, what it's really talking about. And for the most part, you could say it's Hebrew 101, especially when you wake up to your Israelite. So I'm going to play the first clip. It's called a Lion of Judah statue unveiled in Jerusalem. We today live in a time of miracles, of biblical prophecy fulfilled. After many centuries of exile, scattered, just as the scripture stated, to every part of the earth, the nation of Israel has returned en masse. Over the course of thousands of years of Jewish history, there was never before a time when multitudes among the nations of the world sang praise to the God of Israel for being good to the Jewish people. The lion is the symbol of Jerusalem. This is the model of King David, a fierce warrior on the one hand and a humble and caring leader of his people and family on the other. It is my honor now to call upon Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Fleur Hassan Nahum, the Honorable Dean Michelle Bachman, and Debbie Mazaros to unveil the Lion of Judah. What a joke. What a joke. So first and foremost, the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay. The biblical Jews are what you call the so-called Negro people, but like we're telling you, these people are playing a role which they do not fit. And there's history on that. They go back to, uh, goes back to the Maccabean period, where it started with uh, John, which was a Maccabean. He er, he got the name Hyrcanus, which he forced. The scriptures tell you he forced and subdued Idumia, the people of that land, and forced them to our beliefs. And then later down the line. Uh, in 700 and in uh, the 15, 1500s, they adopted what they call Judaism. And But with that, they followed the Babylonian Talmud, which is, isn't there even in the scriptures. And they only follow the Old Testament. But it's because of that they believe that they are the Lord's people. But there's so many questions to be asked, like where's the other 12 tribes? You know what I'm saying? Where's Levi? Where's Ephraim? Where Zebulon, etc. So they stick to their own what they call science and whatever they conjure up to say. Well, the Levites, you have to look at genetics. Oh, the Zebulon, Zab, Zebulon. Well, you have to figure. Out. They don't have a concrete answer. Whereas, and, and everything they do, they go off of a DNA. They even go off of the mother's side as far as you being um, uh, one of them, which is which is. Which is incorrect. Like they say Drake is one of them. Which he's not. It's just because his mother is. But his father is an Israelite. So that's all the way backwards. And that's in the Old Testament as well. So 
like I said, they're playing a role which they don't qualify for. You want to say something? Yeah, when it comes to the circumcision, they go off the... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? But as you can see, he said the Lion of Judah, right? Well, like I said, they denied the New Testament, but you'll find out that the Lion of Judah can only be found in the New Testament. So this is over a mockery, right? You can go ahead, brother. You can start from the top on that. This is the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. That's right. Who's that talking about? Yahweh Shah. So the lion of Judah, as I tell you, the root of David, showing you that he is a man, okay? And that he came from the offspring of David. When you go to Matthew chapter 1, it gives you the lineage all the way from King David to Joseph. Right? And it even tells you that word root there, which I believe in the Greek is sperma. Or rise I right, which means gene. It became the Greek rise I. Okay? It means the actual root, the offspring. So the lion of Judah is an actual man and it's Yahweh Shah. And that's why even when you go to the comment board, everybody's on there like, nope, too bad. That's already talking about Yahweh Shah. That's talking about Yahweh Shah. They say Jesus, but it's talking about Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is the lion of Judah. Okay? Not no damn statue of a of a lion. <laughs> you see? In fact, you got the Genesis 49 for me? You start from Read the first two verses and then jump to uh, eight. Time. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, hear ye, o, hear ye sons of Jacob, hearken unto Israel your father. You said jump down to Verse 8. Eight. Judah, thou art whom. So, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the, the neck of thy enemies. So, like, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Right. So, because Judah was made the head tribe, even though he wasn't the firstborn, because Reuben was the firstborn, but he went off. And Simeon and Levi were the second and third. I don't remember the exact order, but... Because of, you know, the, the bloodshed they committed, uh, the Lord had it to where it fell upon Judah because he said Judah was going to excel, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, it even says what? Thy father's children shall bow down before thee, meaning uh, uh, even with uh, uh, Esau, right? Even with the blessing that Isaac gave Esau, he told Esau, I have made your brother Jacob ruler over thee, Right? So once Jacob had his 12 seeds and then the, we came the nation of Israel, Esau's future will serve Jacob. See? So, yeah, so even Esau's going to bow down to us and really all the other nations. But Judah is set up to be, you know, the head tribe. And ultimately, Yahweh is going to be the king over Israel. And everybody's going to bow to Yahweh as it is written, he wore uh, many crowns. Right, and it says he's gonna have the uh, you gonna have the neck of thine enemies, meaning we will actually have you people in slavery. Okay, you keep going. Uh, and Judah named the Hebrew Yahweh, you know, praise Yahweh, you know. Um, verse ten. No. Oh, verse nine. Slightly. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between from between his feet, until Shiloh will come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Right, who's that talking about? That's talking about Yahweh Shah. 
All right, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Because again, Judah was set up to be the head tribe. The kingdom of heaven is going to be really Yahweh Shai's uh, heaven, I mean kingdom. He's going to share it with us. But Yahweh Shai, as we just read, is the root and offspring of David. David was from the tribe of Judah. His kingdom was a, when, Ju, when, da, when David's rulership uh, was established, he had all 12 tribes together. We weren't no two kingdoms. So and so when the Lord said he's going to raise back up the tabernacles of David, he's going to bring us all back and rulers in, in the land. And we're going to be one family again. And it says uh, until Shiloh come and the word Shiloh means a uh, peace, which is talking about Yahweh Shiloh. Let me go to it. Oh, Shiloh. Shalah. He is whose it is. That which belong to him. Tranquility. Yeah, it means peace. Meaning uncertainty. All right, it's talking about Yahweh Shai. It's only used once. Yep, from Shalah, which means rest. Okay, quietness. And really, that fell on King Solomon, because King Solomon had what peace from all his enemies all his days in his kingdom, which he ruled for forty years, and that was Yahweh Shai, which was a forerun to the kingdom of heaven. All right. So it's talking about Yahweh Shai, that he would eventually come out of the loins of Judah. Right? And we have the physical proof because we have the record when you read Matthew chapter 1. I got a precept to bag that up right now. Okay, mind. go ahead. Could you go to Wisdom of Solomon uh, chapter 7, starting at the top? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. And this is... Uh, Solomon, who was uh, he was uh, Yahweh Shai, if you could receive that, okay? He wrote this book as well. It says, I myself also am a mortal man like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth, okay? It says, and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. But here's the point, for there is no king that had any other beginning. Okay? Okay? For all men have one entrance into life and the going and light and the light going out. So this is King Solomon saying that he was born, okay, and he only had one entrance coming in and one entrance coming out, and that was Yahweh Shai, okay? Uh 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 King Solomon, Yahweh Shai. Uh, if y'all can receive that, and and King Solomon wrote Wisdom of Solomon, so he let you know right there he was born of man, the seed of David. That's right, and that's proof that your know, the nationality is determined by your father. They go off the mother, so they gotta be getting there from the Talmud. Mm -hmm. And there's it's so many questions that you can ask. That's why they don't answer them, and that's why they just have to what pass these laws. To just and ultimately they're trying to say don't question. Don't talk about us because when we come out and we bring out these scriptures, like when we question that and they say, oh, that's the line of Judah. You say, no, that ain't the line of Judah. Yeah, how shy he's sitting on the right hand side of the, of the father. They'll say, hey, you can't talk about us. You know, stop interrupting us in our, you know, our lives. And all we got to do is bring out the truth. You know, we don't even have to get uh, uh, insulting, vulgar. You know, we just keep it about about the truth. But we understand that to them, that's still a problem. Like I said, they're literally living a lie, you know, by just by us proclaiming our true nationality, which that we are, uh, you know, that the, the, the biblical Jews are the so-called Negroes and that the Latinos, Native Americans make up the 12 tribes of Israel. That right there points the finger. OK, well, then who the hell are these people and what the hell is that statue and why is y'all going off the mother? And there's so many questions that they can't answer. The truth is bombarding them. That's why they're moving like you've seen the uh, Brothers doing response videos, passing these laws to just silence you because they don't want you to. That's how you know this truth is working because if they had the truth, all they had to do was defend it. 
they they see us on the highways and byways. And I would ask if I was somebody who didn't understand or believe, I would say, hmm, those guys are proclaiming to be the biblical Jew. Why don't they just go and shut them down with their belief? Because they can't do it. That right there shows defeat. You know, they have to hide. It's defeat. But the, the Bible is true. You want to say something? Yeah, because I was going to say, this is how you know we have the truth. Because if this is just a lesson going into, you know, the truth, why is this be considered anti-Semitic? Mm -hmm. You know, just a lesson like this be considered anti-Semitic because of the truth. Yeah. Because you guys are not the true Jews. And what y'all did over there, building that st like statue, it's like a slap in the face, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, that, that just goes to show you, y'all you, you, are not the true people, man. Okay? And you and you insulting Yahweh Shah with that, because the true, the true line of Judah is sitting on the right-hand side of the Father, but you're going to show the world, no, that's it right there, a damn statue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it said prophecy is fulfilled. Right. You're going to gather all the people and see all heathens over there, man. Right. Right, and, and if I may say just through observation, here he is allegedly preaching about the truth, and he got his head covered, and he got no beard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just, and, and just like the brother mentioned, you know, just like we have the truth, we don't care what other people say, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't go to any government agencies or what have you to say, I need you to write some laws to protect you. Mm -hmm. If you were the real people, you would care less what people have to say about you because exactly. you would stand in your truth. But because you're looking to be aided, to be protected so nobody can talk about you, that says that you're living a lie. That's right. They even put it with ban on drawing. <laughs> Like that's how that's how much you've lost. You can't make fun of us or talk right. about us at all. What the propaganda pictures and stuff? Just people making drawings. Yeah, you know the big, big nose pictures. pictures. <laughs> you know the red. looking like a bum. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that's how you know you lost. God, you can I, keep going. Oh. You know, I'm sorry, so I, I was, I was gonna say, you know, I mean, yeah, we coming, we coming. Okay, even if you keep it. In the new, in the Old Testament, we still talking about the same book, okay? You you can't even prove it out the book you say you read, okay? We coming out the same book, even if you want to keep it in the New Testament. Just say for argument's sake, we didn't even go to the New Testament. You can't even prove it in the Old Testament, okay? You can't do it. You, I mean, it's it's all over. Je, brother got Genesis forty nine. Okay, you could go to uh, Numbers one. The how you talking about? You know how they how they uh, uh, go by the mother right there in Genesis one and eighteen. It's it's according to the father. Okay, you could go to uh, Ezekiel two. Not I'm sorry. You go to Isaiah two, Isaiah fourteen. Okay, you 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 can't dispute this truth. And like the brother say, that's why they they have they have to get these laws. They had to take over the government. Okay. United States ain't nothing but another Israel. Yeah. Okay. That's all it is, and like just like you mentioned, we're dealing with the Old Testament on, like the brother just said, head cover, no beard. Right. And just okay. like when we read, we're gonna hear them talk about that temple. Even they're talking about some water building a temple because the anti is gonna come. Well, wait a minute, that's found in the New Testament. Right. <laughs> so where are you getting this from? Right. You understand what I'm saying? So this is how you know. It's just so many questions. They're trying to fit themselves and insert themselves to say we are these, like uh, even the women, they sh shave their heads to put a wig on because they say the women are supposed to have. Right. You have it. Okay, the so-called black woman wishes they, they could have it. They have to buy They don't have to buy wigs. <laughs> but the, 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 the wig shops is proof of prophecy. Right. And the main customer, the 100% number one customer, is so-called black, that's proof. That those are Judite women, you know, but so, they, but so they shave their head and put right. wigs on. So you know, Evelyn ain't gonna try to force prophecies on them. Of course, yeah, this nigga trying to force the curses on them. <laughs> that, that ain't no different than putting on another man's underwear. Okay, man, man. Mm -mm. Please, but it's okay, so You can try to force these courses, curses on you. But they're going to come on you regardless, yeah. man. So it's like you can keep on doing it. But yeah. hey. Here it is. You're living in the most gated off neighborhood. But you're going to, I got to shave my head because mm -hmm. of the curses. Yeah. But you ain't cursed. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, look, we we the question brothers drive through these yeah. kind of like uh, mm-hmm. cities and big ass houses and shit, and you acting like you struggling, man. Mm-hmm. Pulling out the garage with a fucking Ferrari and shit. Like, come on, man. How are you struggling, man? You keep reading. Uh, Ver- verse 11. Yeah. Why? This is ridiculous. Uh, you said verse 11, right? Okay. And it says, <clears throat> Biden his foal unto the vine, and his ass coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Mm-hmm. His eyes shall be red with wine. His teeth white with milk. Right. And to highlight, this is how you know it's talking about Yahweh Shai, okay, coming out of Judah. Okay. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Really, this this is just talking about how he's going to have a lot of riches, you know, in, in the kingdom of heaven. And then it also, you know, when it talks about the, the wash his garments and wine, of course, you might think of Isaiah 63. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. About... Of sacrifice in Basra. Yep. And the teeth white with, with milk represents uh, riches. Like, you know, Elder Yashwamba came through with the clutch because he did a lesson on it and he shared it. And he pulled up some research, which I'm going to let him play. Right? So basically, like he's going to say, the land, when Yahweh shot, when Yahweh said a land that flows with milk and honey, you find out that milk was only given was rare back then. It was a rare commodity back then. Only the richest. So let me let him say it. It's right at the beginning. Maybe like a minute. Yeah, let's let it play. Shalom, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rechah Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutation as always to the elect. All right, and this is volume two, all right, of Manners and Customs of the Bible. And this book is written by James M. Freeman. All right. It says a complete guide to the origin and significance of our time-honored biblical tradition. All right. Now, the R is ultimately for the Israelites. Okay. And this uh, custom I'm going to get into today. All right. Is one that we've uh, always read about when reading Genesis the 49th chapter, speaking of Judah. What does it say? Milk highly esteemed. All right, and it's quoting Genesis 49. All right, in 12 it says, His teeth white with milk. All right, and when you uh, go into the custom, it says, This is meant to represent the pastoral wealth of Judah. Okay, because the priesthood would ultimately come out of Judah, all right, which ultimately is Yahweh who came from the loins of David. Okay. Now, it says, milk is, in the East, a very important and highly valued article of diet, okay? It says, in India, it is sometimes said of a rich man, he has an abundance of milk. A saying somewhat similar to this, but more closely resembling the text, is applied To one who has plentiful supply of milk, his mouth smells of milk. I'm gonna have to get this book, but Khan, let me see what that's called. Okay, I'm gonna get that book. But Khan, so that's talking about Yahweh Shai and, like you said, riches and wealth, and that's gonna come through in the kingdom of heaven. You know? So that was the prophecy on Judah. So, that is the true line of Judah, the root of offspring. That's talking about Yahweh Shai, a man, okay, not a statue, a man, okay, because what does a statue have to do with milk? What can a statue do with wine? What does that even mean? You know what I mean? So that right there, you're like, wait a minute. As soon as they revealed that statue, you can say, well, wait a minute. If we go to Genesis 49, it tells you that, okay, it's talking about a man. So how can it be a damn statue? And first of all, second of all, the line of Judah is only found in the New Testament. So I thought you didn't believe in the New Testament. So you see, you're trying to force it. But anyway, so that's been debunked. Okay, talking about a man. All right. So if we deal with this temple situation, I'm going to let this play just for like a minute. Should I skip? Yeah, let's play this one. 
It says Israel is, quote, secretly rebuilding the third temple, which they're really not secretly doing it. They're doing it openly. But yes, as we speak, they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to rebuild this physical temple. And they're gathering red heifers to sacrifice in coming of the Messiah. That's what they believe. And because they think that the anti-Messiah is going to show up. You know? So they're just completely off. But let's just show, see it. Christ's government is the next significant event in biblical prophecies, and even though we do not know the day when he will reveal himself, there is something that shows it is very close to happening. The preparations for the third temple, which will be built on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Throughout its history, Jerusalem had two great temples. The first was built by King Solomon, and years later, it was destroyed by the Babylonians. Then, Nehemiah and Ezra built the second temple, about 500 years before Christ. This temple was destroyed by the Romans and has never been rebuilt since then. The third temple is part of a biblical prophecy about the end times. In it, the Lord declares that there will be a third temple when the Antichrist arises and reigns over the world. And recently, some of the evidence for the construction of this third temple has just been revealed which brings us even more certainty that this monument will be erected in this generation. This is because the President of the United States, Joe Biden, has just declared at a Jewish ceremony at the White House that he was optimistic about the reconstruction of the temple, saying the following, Whether in the temple of Jerusalem or in a temple of our democracy, there is nothing that has been broken or defiled that cannot be repaired. Nothing. We can always rebuild it better or perhaps rebuild it with even more brilliance. Some believe that the statement made by the U.S. president was only figurative, as he compared the temple in Jerusalem to the democracy of the United States, which, according to him, had been destroyed by former President Donald Trump. However, we all know that the Antichrist will arise from the Union of Nations and the most powerful religions in the world. So, what may seem like a speech without further intentions is actually a very strong sign of what is about to happen very soon. This clue pointed out by President Biden aligns with the existing project of building the third temple. In December 2018, For anyone with dental issues, do not drink water. Did you know there's a simple way to regrow teeth and gums? In, there was a dedication ceremony of the altar of the third temple in Jerusalem, where, they claim, daily sacrifices will be presented. There is information that all the utensils for the sacred service of the temple are already prepared. There is also a film produced by the project's organizers showing a temple arising in the same location where the Dome of the Rock Mosque currently stands, a disputed site by Jews and Muslims where the Temple of the Lord was previously built. A total of 70 countries were invited to participate in that inauguration, and the rabbi in charge of the project said, at that time, the Jews were brought back to Israel with the purpose of spreading light to the nations. A new light will shine upon Zion, and we will all see this light very soon. So that's basically enough. Let me make sure. That's what I'm saying. So as you can see, they're building what they call the third temple, and they believe it to be a physical temple. You know? So... If you go to the Wikipedia, right, if you, if you Google Third Temple, it says the Third Temple refers to a hypothetical rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. It will succeed Solomon's temple and the Second Temple, the former having been destroyed by the Babylonians, siege in Jerusalem, and the latter having been destroyed during the Roman siege in Jerusalem, 70 uh, A.D. The notion of and the desire for the Third Temple is sacred in Judaism particularly in Orthodox Judaism. It would be the most sacred place for worship for them. The Hebrew Bible holds that the prophets called for its construction prior to or in tandem with the uh, Yahweh Messianic age. The building of the third temple also plays a major role in some interpretations. So they believe that it's physical. All right. So we'll just quickly explain that Oh, I had this scripture, but we'll quickly explain that that temple that's prophesied is actually a, it's a spiritual temple. OK, but again, they deny the New Testament, but they're talking about a third temple, which you can only find in the new in the New Testament. See, that's hypocrisy.
You see, again, it's them trying to insert themselves in the scriptures, in the eyes of the Lord's people, right? Um, I told you to hold Ephesians and Hebrews, right? So I'll read this one. This is John 2 and 19. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in the building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Right? So, did I not have, uh, I'm about to get first Peter's. So the temple was talking about, what is it? You said first Peter's two. Yeah, if you got it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is first Peter two and five. Start at four. Uh, this is first Peter two and four. It says, To whom come coming as unto us is the stone, is allowed indeed of men, but chosen of the power and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built of a spiritual house, the holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right, so we are lively stones building a part of a spiritual house. Alright? Which is the third temple to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And they said what? Yahweh Shah, he's the chief cornerstone. Right, you can read the next verse. Come, and the reason it says, verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay, that's it on that. So that right there tells you that the temple is spiritual, and that the people, which are the Israelites, are stones, building, building br bricks and blocks, each one, right? Even in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, verse 9, For we are laborers together with Yahweh, ye are Yahweh's husbandry, ye are Yahweh's building. According to the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, thereupon. For no other foundation can lay than that is laid, that is, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So Yahweh Shai, the chief cornerstone, he's the foundation of the house. You always start at the foundation when you build anything. And your foundation has to be sure. It can't be on sand because it will not last. It has to be built upon a rock. And Yahweh Shai is that rock. And he said that just like Paul, he's a wise master builder because he's also a builder. And he's also a building block. Right? A brick, so to speak. We are those lively stones. It's the Israelites. It's the elect that make up the temple. Okay? And the spiritual sacrifices, which we do with our lips, according to the scriptures, and our works, and our offerings, that's the third temple. It's a spiritual temple. Okay? Um, I'll read this. It's 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. And what agreement hath the temple of Yahweh with idols? Now, what is he talking about? Well, I'll just read up. Verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness, and what concord hath Yahweh Shah with Baal, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of Yahweh with idols? For ye are the temple of the living power. As Yahweh hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their power, and they shall be my people. So we are the temple. See, this is how I, this goes over Amalek's head. They think if they go and actually, because they got the mon money and the means to build a temple and offer sacrifices, they believe that the Lord's going to receive them. But they were rejected from the beginning. Esau sold, sold his birthright. More importantly, the Heavenly Father dwells not in a temple made with hands. Yeah, we made a temple because that was a commandment of the Lord. He asked us to build a house, but once it was destroyed, it was really set up to, to set up for a spiritual house anyway. Where Yahweh Shai, he's the foundation of it. Right? So he's in us. You got that Ephesians for me? This is Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, 
Yahweh Shai Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple unto the Lord, Yahweh, in whom ye are built together for an habitation of God's power through the Spirit. Right, so the foundation, Yahweh Shai being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, meaning the elect, okay, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple unto the Lord. And if I kept reading on that first Corinthians, after he said that, Paul said that, he also said what? Well, he actually said, let man, every man take heed how they build it, they upon, right? Because Yahweh is picky when it comes to his temple, right? Anything that is unaccepted will be burnt with fire. That he was very picky. So just like when he said, in whom uh, the building fitly framed together, meaning everybody has to be on the same accord. There is one spirit, as the scripture says, showing you that, oh, well, y'all teach the mark of the beast as a chip, but that's okay. We teach that as sin, but that's all right. Because in the end, no, because eventually there is one word, there's one gospel. Eventually somebody's going to be proven right and the other person's going to be proven wrong. You can't build a temple. Right. And, and, you know, you got good, put good pieces of brick on one side, but then in the midst of it, you got pieces of shit and, and, and untempered mortar. It ain't going to work. It's got to be all the way perfect. And it's talking about the people. OK, it doesn't matter. I mean, we got the best constructions on workers on site building this temple. That don't mean nothing. The Lord is still a spiritual. OK, it says in whom ye also are built together. For a habitation of Yahweh through the Spirit, showing you that this is spiritual. The third temple is spiritual. It's not nothing physical. All right. Uh huh. Uh, Hebrews three and six. Oh, okay. Did I tell you? Somebody got Hebrews right. I thought start from the top on Hebrews three. That was the last. Uh, oh, that, was that was the last one. You start from the top. Uh, this is Hebrews three and one. Where four. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostles, the high priests of our profession, Hamashiach Yabashai, who was faithful to him that appointed him, and as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of much glory than Moses, insomuch as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. For every man of the for every house is built by some men, but he that built all things is Yahweh. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant, servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Hamashiach Yahushai as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Whose house we are. Okay, keep going. And it says... If we hold fast the confidence in the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end, wherefore, as the Holy Spirit said, Today, if we, we ye would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation. And said they do always err in their heart, and they have not always so I can not know my ways. So, okay. Okay. so right there it says talking about your house house, it says uh, it says whose house we are we? Right? Because again, your house has the foundation. It actually is one of these verses, I think it says the head of the house. I think later in Hebrews. There's a head of the temple, I think. I believe it's in Hebrews. No. Oh, okay, it's Colossians. Okay. So again, uh, this is Colossians 1. Verse 17, talking about Yahweh Shai, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, which is the building. All right, because he also refers to what? He said what? Destroy this temple, I will build it in three days. He's talking about what? His body. 
That's why when we keep the Passover, we partake of the bread and the blood, which represents his body. And we're all a part of the body. So his body is referred to as the body as well as the temple, which is the building, which is the church. So he's the head of the body, the church, the building, right? Who was the beginning, the first for, firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. So you see that dealing with the Lion of Judah and the third temple all consists of Yahweh Shai, whom these Amalekites do not believe. So they don't believe in him. So they're going all the way off. They don't understand. You know. Again, they did not a New Testament, they're, but they're pulling these prophecies, whatever again, from the New Testament. But I thought you didn't believe in it. So the fact is, Yahweh Shai, he is the Lion of Judah, and he is the head of the body, which is the church. And he's the foundation, and it's a spiritual house. And the elect, the hundred forty four thousand. Of the East Twelve, of the East Tribe, and the mixed multitude make up the the building. Okay, so that's that's it. You know, that's it. So we have just you know debunked this uh, these uh, beliefs here, and you know they are still offering physical sacrifices, showing you that they're really mocking you. How it shot? They're basically saying we don't know this Messiah fellow. We're waiting on our Messiah. And we're going to keep doing what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? We built our own statue and we're building our own temple. We don't know nothing about this Messiah character. And we're going to sacrifice him to these people, which they need Levites to do that. I don't know how they're going to figure out how they, how they, who's Levi. You know, it's a big, it's a big joke. You understand? So bottom line is these people are not the people and they're off. Y'all got anything else? Yeah, I got a quick piece of Yeah, go ahead. So in fact, we need to look at Zach Ryan. Ooh, this is Zechariah 6 and 13. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to add verse 12. And it says, <clears throat> And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaking the Howard of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahweh. And even he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the glory, and sit, and, and shall sit, and rule upon his throne, then he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And you know, that branch is Yahweh Shai, you know, and you know, once again, he is going to be ruling upon the throne. He sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, so he's the head of the, the house, you know, and we are that house, okay? So, yeah, Yahweh Shai is going to be the head of the, this third temple. Okay. Right. And there's a spiritual house, so you can't physically build it because the Lord is not dealing with no physically built house. Once it was destroyed, that was it. He's, he focused on what? A third temple. And he said what? He spake of his body. See? So, you know, it all boils down to Yahweh Shai, which they do not believe. So all this is is just open mockery towards Yahweh Shai and their blatant, blatant disrespect towards the Messiah. Just shows the hypocrisy of America because they call America's so-called Christian values. But how can you be joined into non-believers when, according to the scriptures, Yahweh Shai it has to be a part of the doctrine, showing you the hypocrisy of America as well. And that's why people call them a Christian Zionist, which is an oxymoron in itself. Because if you're a Christian, the word Christ is in it when you about the Messiah. But how can you be about them which they deny the Messiah? So there's a lot of hypocrisy in Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah is about to reveal these people for who they are. In fact, they've already been revealed. That's why have to, they have to resort to such tactics, you know, because they're mad, they're fuming, as Yahweh, Yahweh said, uh, frustrated the tokens of liars and make diviners mad. Because they're craft, they're, 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 and he says, he taketh the wicked in his craftiness. It's all failing. That's why they have to resort to just well, we, if we just make it illegal for people to say anything, that'll stop people from speaking the truth. That's what they have to resort to uh, because they lost. Just like, oh, the U.S. dollar is going to always be around because we have guns. You, you lost. OK, that, that just makes me mad. So you, you just you are admitting that you have no social or political cards to play. All you can do is say we have a gun. 
That's was that's how I know this is gonna last. We have guns, so they're all about force. They don't deal with truth or spirit. They have to we're gonna pass legislation that'll keep people from stop talking about us and preaching the truth. That's all this is, man. And that's all these Edomites know is force. You yeah. know? And hey, what this devil gonna start doing? You know, persecuting the truth. You yeah. know. Hey, the truth come, is going to constantly come out, man. It's like putting Mentos in a Coke bottle and you shake it up. You think that pop top not going to come off soon, man? Mm-hmm. You cannot conceal the truth, man. Yes, you got to be a good-ass liar. But you devils ain't no good liars, man, because you always get found in your tracks, okay? You like the story of uh, when the priest kept on eating the food, man. The tracks kept on leading into the statue, man. So they, we know you devils ain't the people, and y'all are a bunch of liars, man. That's right. And you won't hear vocab say a word on any of this. Okay, why? Because he's one of them. He's silent. His lips are sealed. Now, if you ask him who was the line of Judah, oh, let's talk about the Messiah. Then how come they got a statue over there, and he ain't going to say nothing? You know, so we got to defend the gospel. You know, these Edomites aren't spiritual. They're only carnal. We're going to turn on you guys. Okay. I got one. Yeah, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Uh, we're going to go to the uh, Matthew 24, right? And the 23rd verse, mm-hmm. right? Because they got statues. They're building the temple. You know, they go sacrifice helpers, okay? And, and and that has nothing to do with our Lord, Savior, Mediator, Yahweh Shai, okay? Like the brother said, they don't believe. But this is the book of Matthew. Chapter 24, the 23rd verse, it says, Then if any man shall say, Lo, I say unto you, Lo, here is Hamashiach, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. So if you actually go into uh, great signs and wonders, okay, is something that shows something that distinguishes it from something else, but it also means that something to pretend, okay? You pretending something great is happening outside uh, these scriptures, okay? Okay? That's why the next verse say, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Because the elect are going to know that they pretended that they 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 are false, and that's why the scriptures say, okay, they they are the synagogue of Satan, okay. So that's that's all I had. They pretended to 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 be the people, and they not because they have to do these great signs and wonders and beat their chest and show, hey, we got this, we doing that, and they're not the people, okay. Yep, so when that time comes, they're probably going to have Project Blue Beam up there. You know, they're going to act like lightning's coming down, but you're going to see somebody down there lighting a the match. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Might catch on fire, too. It most will. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to try to make the scene. They probably already got somebody pretending to play the Messiah. You know, it, it's going to happen. It's all prophetic, but we're just laughing because we know that this is the truth. And... Uh, you know, these devils are, are exposed. And we we have to defend the gospel because other fake uh, fake phonies like Vocab Malone, he won't speak, he won't say a word dealing with this, even though they're blatantly disrespecting, openly disrespecting the Messiah, which he claims he believed, but he got all the smoke for us, though. And we believe the Messiah. I'm going to make a word for you. No, you're good. I good. Vision. I still remember the vision. Like, yo, I was like, either... 11 or 12 when I had this vision, and it's basically like a fucking white Jesus came, and he was like walking in the middle of the crowd. Everybody was just passing out and shit, just seeing him, and when you try to touch him, my brother said, don't touch me. Like, I was just like, what the hell? And I woke up, and I told my mom and stuff, and she was just like... She just told me, boy, you you walk around these weird-ass dreams and shit. <laughs> hey, hey. It's crazy that they building all this stuff and you said they had a false Messiah. Hey, could it happen, man? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the true line of Judah and the third temple, which is spiritual, which is us. It's talking about the elect, hopefully elect, the people. Okay? The line of Judah being Yahweh Shai 
everything is based upon your house shot. You see? So with that, we hope it was edifying and uh, we say shalom. Shalom.